Welcome to the Chang International Circuit, a truly beautiful location at Buriram. 12 corners knitted into 4.554 kilometers and look out for turn three. It's very tight. Welcome, this is the Blancpain GT Series Asia. My name is Renai Matu, and after an incredible opening round in Malaysia, we are here in Thailand. Buriram is the scene at Chang International Circuit for rounds three and four. Now, it's been hot out there in free practice, plenty of good action, and lots and lots of good racing on the way. I'm joined by Stefan Rattel, CEO and the founder of Blancpain GT Series. Um, you, we saw you at the start of the inaugural season. Um, how have things been going? No, we're very pleased uh, because on its uh, second season of the Blancpain GT Series Asia, we see that the series is uh, stabilizing and it's very important. It's good to make a success in motorsport, but it's even better to, to keep it and grow it. And uh, we see a, a grid that grows in strengths, uh, in diversity. We have here many different manufacturers that can, that can pretend for overall victory. And we're also very pleased to see the GT4 category growing with, uh, with now, I think, 11 cars. And uh, that gives the prospect of maybe next year I have a GT3 race and the GT4 race separate. So we're heading in a good direction. Oh, that sounds good. Now, um, we're at Chang International Circuit. It's one of the new and more exciting circuits on the Asian calendar. Um, why here? But it's, you know, it's now one of the best circuits in Asia, and the Blancpain GT Series Asia is really a, a pan-Asian series. Uh, we have two races in Japan, two races in China, one in Malaysia, and it's logical to have one in Thailand. We want to be in as many possible Asian countries, and such a good circuit, we can't miss it. It must be awesome because you have some Thai drivers here as well, lots of representation. What's the future? Uh, but as I said, it, it's to grow Pan Asian, it's to have more and more di drivers of different nationalities represented and more of them at the top being able to win races. And it's what we have today and what we will continue to work at. Okay, thank you very much, Stefan. Enjoy the racing. Thank you. Okay, now. Sepang International Circuit was the scene of round one and two, and there was plenty to show you. Here are the highlights. The race got underway. Light to make at the last moment. And that, that caught off guard. One or two at the very front of the grid. And he meant there was a real bottleneck on the run down towards turn one. But from pole position, Dennis Lind was the man hanging on to the advantage. Around the outside, tried to go Leo Yi, but to no avail. The Ferrari got run out wide. And so Lind it was who led, but a good effort by Nico Bastian put him up on the outside line at turn two. As the Lamborghini escaped, it was Bastian then who was left to hang on to second spot. Battles raged on behind it as Aditya to Patel managed to get third. The Audi of last year's championship runners-up was looking good. It was not to last though, because it wasn't long before the car limped into the pit lane. We had cars in strife early on, a spinning Andrew McPherson. The damaged Aston Martin had been in and out of the pit lane. And when the pit window arrived, so with a flourish did Nico Bastian. Patrick Niederhauser was installed in the car, and with new rear tyres, it had so much better traction and so much more pace than the leader, the gap started to crumble. In GT4, BMW trying to work its way up the order, but way out in front was the GT4 Mercedes in the hands of Russell Ward and Rango Reinhold because that car was pulling further and further away. And on borrowed time, the leading Lamborghini of FFF Racing Team, it wasn't long before Niederhauser was crawling all over the back of Martin Kodrich. And however wide he tried to make the car, it always looked inevitable that the Mercedes would find a way through. And it came round the outside, going from turn seven to turn eight. They touched, they both got a bit sideways, but the Mercedes was coming through, and it was all smiles at Grupperan. Through the traffic came Niederhauser. A mighty display to win round one of Blancpain GT Series Asia. Let's catch up on the highlights then of this second Blancpain GT Series Asia race of the weekend. Pole position being taken by Josh Burden in the Audi. And as the cars accelerated away from the line, Josh Burden it was versus Raffaele Marciello. And it was Marciello on the outside line who made the best start. Josh Burden had to try and defend on the run in towards the first corner. 
to prevent the Nissan from squeezing up the inside. In the end, he lost out, but was able to fight back over the opening corners. But in the body of the field, through the tight turns one and two, there was drama, bodywork flew, and it was from Patrick Niederhauser's car. Damaged suspension and a punctured tyre effectively put them out of the race on the spot, although they limped as far as the pit lane. And so, up front, it meant the race leader pulled clear. Patrick Niederhauser, though, was a retirement. Big disappointment for him at the end of just the opening lap of the race. The car did go out and have an explore, but in the end, it only did three laps in total. So, with the opposition scrapping amongst themselves, Bryce Bosey pulled away up front, and it was Renger, Reinhold, uh, Reinhold Renger, I should say, who was leading in GT4 with Gilles Vanillet tucked up behind him. Two Mercedes battling early on. This was what happened at Turn 1 to cause the demise, really, of the Mercedes. The contact was already there. Martin Rubb was also delayed in the number three Audi going wide, and although Niederhauser went back out, it was to no avail. The sister car up front, though, was building the lead all the time, and the battle was on in GT4, where it was still Reinhold Renger keeping at bay Gilles Vanillet with the BMW, the new M4 GT4 in contention as well. Porsche and McLaren falling back over the opening few laps of the race. Making his way up into second spot, Josh Burden going well in the Audi, ready to hang over to Anthony Liu. And as the pit stop window opened, that car was in, ready for the driver change. Drama in GT4 as the Mercedes got all crossed up around the front of the BMW. They were battling for position and the car delayed but still fought back for a class podium result in the end. Martin Kodrich lost out to number 23. Nessa and was a hard charging Eduardo Liberati got up the inside. That was a battle that raged on. Aditya Patel running with them as well. Dennis Lind would take over number 19 and make it fly late in the race. Leo Yi also gaining ground as the race came towards the end of the hour. Also hustling on was a hard charging Frankie Chain, but he couldn't quite find a way past Hiroshi Hamaguchi for third place. They were both being caught by Leo Yi as the cars accelerated their way over the timing line. Frankie Chain, hard at work. Martin Rump could hardly watch. He was determined to get a first ever Blanc Pan GT Series Asia podium, but it was out of his hands. Chang needed to find a way past Hamaguchi as up front it was Bryce Posey and Raffaele Marchiello on target for a dominant win as the car turned its way out of the final corner, blasted across the line, victorious. And so the car came through to score race honours. In GT4, Gilles Vanillet was the winner along with Ringo Chong and an excellent job done by the new iRace.win team. But for Grupper M, it was honours for Bryce Bosey and Raffaele Marchiello, Gilles Vanillet and Ringo Chong, a new combination of drivers like Marchiello and Bosey coming through as the winners. So after some incredible racing in Sapang, the season is truly underway. We are here in Buriram now. Now this is a relatively new track on the Asian circuit and one that plenty of people are getting excited about. I love this track to come to as a fan because from anywhere in the grandstand, you can see all of the action, pretty much all of the action out there. And I can tell you that's something that's really special. Now to get a little bit more detail about what we're in store for this weekend here in Thailand is Dave Roberts. The city of happiness, northeastern Thailand bordering on Cambodia, a six and a half hour train journey from Bangkok. Yet in the middle of the country, you have this. <laughs> Chang International Circuit, the destination of speed. And this weekend, as Blancpang GT Series Asia comes to town, car 911 is one to watch as it carries a home favorite. It feels great, really. It's both something that makes me nervous because of all the Thai fans that are coming to watch, but also something that gives me motivation because I feel comfortable at home and it's, it's a pleasure racing here. The circuit has been designed to F1 standards. MotoGP's here too. And for the Thai driving hero, having this facility on home soil is a massive boost. I think having a facility like this in Thailand is great for Thai motorsports because before there wasn't really a home for it but now we have an established home here in Buriram and I'm very proud to say that this circuit is top level, everything is as high a standard as it would be in Europe so having that here at home is something truly special. 
At the start, we built small, but the circuit has expanded to meet the owner's vision of building the best circuit ever. That is why Chang International Circuit was born. For Kun Yuin Chichok, everything must be the best. Thai driver on a Thai circuit, but will it be a Thai flag flying high above the podium? A great weekend of racing ahead of us in what will be a surprising location for some. Plenty to get excited about this weekend then. Now I am here in the, the grid lane where all the cars are coming in behind me. Plenty of buzz, plenty of action. And this weekend we'll be joined by Bruce Jones talking us through all of the action. Bruce, how are you doing up there? Brunei, I'm a lot cooler than you are. You may look cool, but I know you're feeling very hot indeed down there on the grid. Fantastic sights, uh, a grid walk going on, and 29 cars coming out to play. Should have been 30, but unfortunately, uh, the McLaren from Clearwater Racing had a technical problem this morning, can't be fixed in time, so that has uh, been withdrawn. But still, huge field of cars here for the second visit of the Blanc Pan GT Series Asia. And what a mix of manufacturers as well to keep everything on the boil not just in gt3 but in gt4 as well a real mix of cars and they're not just uh, in two by twos because they're mixed up as well as uh, they are up and down the grid it's not a case of one make at the front and the rest all behind they are mixed together which is exactly how we like it and wonderful sights with the flags waving down there that actually means there's a bit of breeze which we most welcome because the uh, humidity continues to rise we had little thunderstorms yesterday late afternoon and then in the evening i think we're all set for a dry race so far but i'm aware that in the tropics things can change very quickly indeed but uh, with no further ado let us go back down to the grid because uh, in the world of the od racing audi camp renai has caught up with mitch gilbert down there on the grid and we'll hear from him he's sharing with always Aditya a pleasure Patel. to be talking to mitch gilbert now you're starting tomorrow here we are your cars here now thailand i noticed you get loads of fans wherever you guys go and thailand's one of those places yeah um, thailand's good for us you know od racing is owned by od group and we've got a big uh, Big group of members in in Thailand, so it's cool. I mean, last last night we went to a dinner. There was two thousand people there, so Thailand is cool for us, and and yeah, we enjoy it here. Okay, so do you enjoy the track as well? How's the car in the heat? Yeah, I mean the track. I like the track actually, and I think it's quite quite. We enjoy going around it. One by one is one thing, but trying to get around in race order and do some overtaking really makes the drivers work. And of course, we've got the two classes of cars: the 19 GT3 runners up at the front end. And then the GT4s at the back, less powerful, and uh, they will have to keep out of the way. 45 degrees. We saw four, 51 degrees track temperature earlier, so it shows the clouds are uh, coming in a little bit to help. Humidity, 58%. Well, it certainly feels more than that if you're standing down there on the grid. I'm lucky. I'm in an air-conditioned commentary box. And one of the beauties of the circuit here is the fact you can see so much from any given vantage point, which really makes it unusual and fantastic place to come and spectate. We heard from Mitch Gilbert talking about a mere 2,000 guests at dinner last night. Huge amount of corporate activity at uh, this meeting in particular. And OD Racing uh, spoke to the team last year. They entertain so many guests. And it's wonderful seeing people coming to look at most racing, perhaps for the first time. And what a sight it makes. The cars look absolutely superb down there on the grid. Race starts, uh, the whole procedure starts at 2.30. But let's go down to the grid because uh, Renai is working very hard indeed and she's caught up with Frankie Cheng who will be starting tomorrow. Today it's being started, the number three Audi, by Martin Rob. Down to, down to Renai. So we are talking to Frankie Cheng. Frankie, um, it's a great day out. Do you like this track? Well, uh, the track is very, very nice. It's pretty challenging. It's not a, let's say, a, a very long circuit. It's around 1 minute 33, 34, one lap, so it's actually quite packed, everything, yes. Okay, now we've had the pleasure of watching you race in the whole season last year. What brings you back? Well, the, the championship itself is very challenging and uh, with a lot of good teams, uh, a lot of good drivers. I think this is uh, representing uh, the highest level in motorsports in Asia. Okay, good luck today. Thank you very much. It's going to be very busy if you're the absolute racing crew because they've got three cars, three of their Audis entered in the top category in GT3. Look down on the grid, you can see we're looking at the Porsche Caymans largely having their doors flapped. All the drivers wanted to stay as cool as they can on board because don't forget they're in full race suits, helmets and uh, very little breath gets into the car, very little wind. Front row on the left-hand side we can see the Group M racing 
Mercedes on pole position on the outside of the front row, the red Ferrari, number 27 from Hub Auto Corsa. The Ferraris go very well here, and they won one of the two races here in 2017. So for the drivers who are not taking the start of the race, the number two driver, they will come into the second half of the race. They, most of them are running away to get a bit of shade now because it's very, very hot indeed. Only a central crew staying out on the grid to make sure all the 29 starters are able to fire up but a fantastic mixture of cars front row as i said mercedes and ferrari second row audi mercedes then third row lamborghini and audi as well so real mix of cars so we've had the first round of the championship in sepang this is round two of six here we are chang international circuit in thailand at the end of next month we go to suzuka and then uh, three weeks later the fuji international speedway so two japanese races and we round out the second campaign with two races in china shanghai international circuit home of the chinese grand prix and a few weeks later ningbo international speed park one of many many new circuits springing up around asia asia this championship continues to grow and i'm sure we'll see some new faces come and join the show before the end of the season but right now we need to focus on what lies ahead a one-hour race with uh, two drivers per car the pit window uh, will be signalled and will open. There will be a 10-minute window in which the teams can uh, scramble one driver out of the car, place another on board. And one little curveball to be thrown into the mix is the fact that uh, the top three finishers in each, the GT3 class and the GT4 class, they get a time penalty which is added to the length of their pit stop. They have to stay stationary for 15 seconds if they won the race last time around. And that's the 888 Mercedes in GT3 and the 72 Mercedes in uh, gt4 10 seconds for the cars that finished second and five seconds extra in the pits for the cars that finished third we'll bear that in mind when we get to the round of pit stops but we're going to go right the way through here one hour of racing and the same again tomorrow but of course the driver number one was the one who set the grid positions for today's race and their teammate sets the one for tomorrow's race so the grids will be jumbled necessarily but uh, as we get the cars strip bare so to speak the, most of the pit crew have left the drivers we can now see the cars clearly everyone looking down from the giant grandstand gets a clear view of the cars for the first time they stretch almost the entire way down to the final corner turn 12 you can see right the way down to the back where we have the uh, number 72 mercedes team race i race win but unfortunately they didn't win because they had their time to allow for qualifying and that is why the second of the two mercedes in gt4 is at the very back of the grid in 29th position and just to reiterate we did start here with 30 cars at the start of practice but unfortunately we've lost the one and only mclaren from clearwater racing so no race today for daniel Au and richard we singaporean crew engines starting to fire up of course we will have the parade lap and then the rolling start and uh, it's not that long a run down to turn one a tightish right hander but then the field the track really opens out a kink at turn two but it's really just a kink in a long straight so plenty of time to sort yourself into position for turn three and then of course it is the opening lap you do have to try a passing maneuver there's plenty of space up there but it suddenly comes in when you're trying to put three four, even four cars abreast down into turn three so a little caution would be a great help but racing drivers are racing drivers so we all know absolutely anything could happen they're just waiting for the signal to go away the pace car sets off on its course and then we'll expect the 999 patrick niederhauser driven mercedes to be the first to pull away when it's given the signal so to do and on the outside the front row is hong li ye in the red ferrari the white band up the middle of the second row it's the audi martin rob the number three audi and then the second of the group m mercedes alexander matchell one of um, three of the four mercedes drivers for group m changed this weekend and matchell's teammate is one to really look for so here's the grid patrick niederhauser was sharing with marcus palmer on pole position then we have the audi and the mercedes on row two with alexander matchell starting then dennis lind and martin codrick very good but the lamborghini not quite on the pace anthony lude and josh burden burden already one of the stars of the series aditya patel and mitch gilbert very quick indeed for od racing starting seventh then we've got indigo racing from korea so again international mix in ninth on the grid the second ff lamborghini is 11th and uh, the better of the craft bamboo porsches 12th the second one in 14th place sandy studic local hero let's see what he can do inspired by the honor of representing the thai nation then we move down towards the tail end the top 19 cars are in the gt3 class with the rear being brought up by andrew mcpherson and ben porter and amac motorsport lamborghini and then bmw on pole 
for the GT4 class. So the M4 only recently launched for GT4 competition and proving very handy indeed. Then a whole host of Porsche Caymans, that is the predominant car in GT4 in the Asian series. And then right at the back, we've got uh, Reinhard Renger had his uh, best time taken away, so he's gone down to uh, 28th position in his Mercedes from Grupa M and Ringer Chong and Gilles Vanillet in the 72 car. So the two Mercedes in GT4 at the back, but in terms of pace, they could be right at the front. Well, this is the formation lap. The first few runners just going around the main lake here, which is uh, from turn four, five, six, and at seven they jink to the right and they go to the really twisty part of the circuit with turns eight, nine, and ten before it opens out again towards the end of the lap. So there's one of the two Craft Bamboo Racing entries. That's down middle order. That was 14th position out of the 12. So the field bunching up. We need those bank runners to uh, close right in. We want these cars to be running in two by two formation. The first grouping of cars already coming out of turn 10. So they need the GT4 runners brought up at the rear by the 72 Mercedes of Ringo Chong to close into the back of shot. They're doing just that now. So just look for the charcoal Charcoal grey Mercedes in the background, I think that was it. Yes, just coming into shot. There it is, number 72. So once that's into position, the field is halfway down from turn 11 towards turn 12. Turn 12, about a 110 degree right-hander. Very, very tricky indeed. But the good thing is the cars are all in race order in the 2x2 two two formation. They don't start until they come round the final corner. They'll have the eyes on the lights on the starting gantry. We can see the back of those, so the lights are all on red. We'll wait until the entire field, all 29 cars are through that final corner. They're going to have to throw it very soon indeed. Looks like a fantastic start from Niederhauser. Not a very good start at all from Leo Yi, falling down to fourth place. Should have been in second. Up the inside goes the better of the Lamborghinis, and that's uh, Dennis Lind, who's uh, a real star of the car. We've got a spinner, though. Unfortunately, looks like the ARN Racing Ferrari's gone around in the background. That's really, really bad luck indeed. But then I said turn one is a tricky one. But Martin Rump in the Audi is looking very serious indeed. He tries to challenge. He's leaving his braking as late as he can. Snaking around in the Audi. The Ferrari's fighting back in the second. The Lamborghini. Dennis Lind is trying to get into the mix as well. But just looking very composed. Patrick Niederhauser, who's starting a fantastic season. He's already got a few wins to his name. Not just in this series, but other ones as well. And he's being pushed very hard indeed. But look at the pace of the Ferrari. Got out of turn three very, very well indeed. And uh, Martin Rump in the Audi has fallen back. He's been passed now by the Audi Racing Audi as well. So it must have been a mistake on the exit of turn three from second. Suddenly we have Martin Rump back into fifth position. Just waiting to see if the last of the uh, if the spinners have all managed to get going again. I think they possibly have. I'll let you know. Now the middle order looking very, very busy indeed. Why go one at a time when you can go two abreast? But look at the challenge for the lead because suddenly Dennis Lint worked his way from fourth at turn three up to second place by turn four. And now he's pushing very, very hard indeed onto the tail of Patrick Niederhausen. Through turn 11 they come. There are 12 corners in this 4.5 kilometer lap. The Ferrari's fighting back. Martin Rump in fifth place is fighting back, but uh, he's uh, running behind the OD Racing. A Ditcher Patel driven Audi, but on the start finish line, it's super close indeed. Patrick Niederhauser leads across with a, an advantage of under half a second. A little bit of a gap back to sixth place. Sixth place is the better place to hold the Nissans. Liberati, and who's going to be in the top the GT4 car on the start finish line? Just waiting for the first of those to go through. And it's 80, the 81 BMW up to overall 20th position, but Dennis Lynn is pushing so hard. The Lamborghinis, they've been super keen here this weekend, but just haven't got the pace. But no one's put that message across to Dennis Lind because he's keeping Patrick Hauser right on his toes. Coming back down from turn three to turn four. As you can see on that shot, slight undulations up and down, but gradually rising. Then they go around the first of the lakes. The Group M Mercedes looking well, relatively comfortable because he's opened out a lead of half a car length. But into the corners, suddenly the, the Lamborghini closes all closes that gap down to next to nothing again but being pushed very hard in third place as well Ferrari made a dreadful start fell down to fourth almost fifth position but it seems to have plenty of grunt and it's closed right in again so Leo Yi closing right up there in the number 27 Ferrari Niederhauser what a great start he had it just bought him the space he needed Aditya Patel in fourth place seems to be quite comfortable ahead of uh, Martin Rump uh, Rump will be Brewing the fact he was second up into turn three on the opening lap and then suddenly was fifth two corners later. 
and Liberati in the 23 Nissan very very close on to his tail as well the pace from Nissan has been pretty solid in every session there's a little bit of a gap and then the second of the Ferraris has now just moved up position so uh, Maxwell Sorry, not Maxwell. Sure. It's a Ferrari, and I tell you what. In fact, it's not the, the white. It's the white nose. So that's the Indigo Racing Mercedes that's now up to seventh. So it's Maxwell in eighth in his Mercedes, and Hamaguchi ninth in his Lamborghini. Liberati is the car in this battle for the driver of the car in this battle for third place, fourth place. That looks though he's the one with the pace. He's the back of the group. It's Patel in the red Audi with the blue nose, tucked in behind Martin Rump, and then the blue and white. Nissan is looking very feisty, but getting close on this track is one thing, getting past is quite another. And what we're starting to see is that little bunch is falling away from the trio of Niederhauser, Lind and Yi. That's the Mercedes, the Lamborghini and the Ferrari. They seem to have the legs on the Audis behind, but... Uh, 63, Hamaguchi, we've got a pit caller. Unfortunately, that's the car that spun on the opening lap. That's the, the Ferrari that went for a little loop there with Nagai at the wheel, Hiroaki Nagai punted out at the first corner, or did he spin? All we saw was the car going sideways, maybe we'll get a replay later. So that's confirmation in last position is that Ferrari, number 8, 29th position, but importantly for the team in the pits, I think I heard the engine be turned off as well, so that could be their race run, let's hope not. So here, first and second, Patrick Niederhauser, has he weathered the storm ahead of Dennis Lynn? Certainly looks like the Mercedes is, yes, he's found another quarter of a second, just under a second clear now. A little bit more of a gap back to third place, but this battle, Patel, Rump and Liberati, very strong indeed. Great little run here from Juwon Seo, the Korean racer in the Korean entered, entered Indigo Mercedes. Any race where you're running ahead of a Group M Mercedes is very good indeed, and he is in front of the second. Mercedes from Group M with Alexander Maxwell on board. Maxwell will now be driving that car for the remainder of the season. Martin Rump not shy of making an attempt to pass the car ahead, so he'll be handing over later in, in the race if all goes well to his teammate. We heard from his teammate before the start of the race, Frankie Chen Kung Fu. And here comes Liberati, Liberati in, the, in the Nissan. Has he got the grunt in the straight line? Well, unfortunately for Rump, he most certainly does. So I said. The Nissan driver looked to have the wheels that uh, would work best in this grouping. His next target, Aditya Patel in the OD Racing Audi. There it is, best of the Audis in the race at the moment. There's a little bit of a gap behind them back to Ju Wan Sio. Don't forget, this is a two-driver race. And uh, what you really need is a great combination. However fast your first driver is, you need your second driver if you're going to do well to be equally matched in terms of pace or faster but what you need is a really strong combination fastest lap of the race so far Patrick Niederhauser he'll be handing over to Marcus Pommer later on so that is a good strong pairing Pommer though just brought in this weekend taking over one of the drives of Group M Racing is it evens at the front well in fact the gap slightly come down from first to second the GT4 it's still the 81 BMW leading the way 72 Mercedes in the background of the shot obviously started uh, stone last but that started to pick its way up the order in fact is up into sixth place in class Ringo Chong at the wheel here is the class lead it's down to next to nothing because Reinhold Ranger is right with Jakuchu Jakuchu and the BMW one of the two BMWs from the Japanese team BMW team Studi don't forget Ranger started in 28th position on the grid was put down to the towards the tail of the grid and the very last position was the other Mercedes the 72 but that hasn't made as much progress up the order as yet as we just said Ringo Chong's got it up to sixth in class but second in class is where the Group M Mercedes sits Reinhold Renger really fancying his chances but I must say these BMW's M4s just look very well balanced around the circuit and in the hands of uh, Sunaka Jakucho driving very well indeed Second BMW in the background of the shot, so they are second, uh, first and third in class. And it's the 82 car with Kenny Rata in the background. The AM class on is being fought, fought out very hard indeed there. The Lamborghini on the left-hand side of your shot, that's Andrew McPherson, right on the tail of the KC MG Audi. So uh, battles within battles, if you will, because we have the Silver Cup runners, we have the Pro-AM combinations and the AM combinations in the top class in the GT3 class. Watch out for this Ferrari, picking its way back up the order. So it did go out into the race again, but uh, stone last 
after its spin on the opening lap and the lengthy drive back to the pits for repairs. And I start to fancy as we look at the second of the Group M Mercedes that Alexander Matchell, like all the others behind him, they're starting to get a bit bunched up behind Juwon Sio. Juwon is lapping in seventh place, but that 97 Mercedes I think is holding up a bit of a train of cars. Up at the front end of the race, don't be confused, the charcoal and yellow Mercedes is a GT4 runner, and that Ringo Chong is into the next class back. We treated to a group that was the lead group that was just in among them. This is the GT4 battle for honours, and it looks so uh, you just got to soften them up a bit. Reinhold Renger coming down into the final corner, just looking up the inside of Jakutu, but uh, I think it was an exploratory look rather than anything serious. So he tucks back in behind again. Ten minutes of the race almost completed. This is the point at which the drivers now need to just settle down, think about how many tyres they're going to hand back to their teammates, or more to the point, how many are not going to be completely uh, rubbed down. Of course, uh, the second driver always rather likes a, a little bit of rubber left to play with in the remaining half hour, or some, in some cases about 25 minutes of the race. And uh, many a time the first driver just takes a little bit too much life out of them, and then you see the car falling away in the second part of the race. It's a one-hour race, and it's a little bit of a mistake there. <laughs> Pounced on very keenly by Reinhold Renger. Change of lead in the GT4 class. And I think it simply was a slight lapse from the S World class leader in the BMW, Jakutsu. And uh, just couldn't get the car turned into the corner. So he understeered wide and uh, Renger didn't need a second invitation. But he <laughs> gives it back again when they get up to turn four. So it was a um, slow in, fast out, and then fast in, slow out. That was the difference. And, uh, so the faster exit led to the better speed down the straight towards turn four. And the BMW profited again. So maybe also what we're seeing is the fact that actually the Mercedes is handling better, thus the ability going very well indeed, keeps out the way very nicely there. Oh dear, the sister Group M car of uh, Matchell has suddenly tumbled right down to the bottom of the glass, limping into the pit lane. Is that bodywork rubbing on a punctured tyre? From this angle, it looks though the car is not running straight, it looks like it's crabbing, so I think that is a puncture. Oh dear, he was running quite safely around about 8th position, tracing very hard uh, Juwon Sio. Alex Matchell, that is the puncture, that is not a planned pit stop. As you can see, they're trying to replace that tyre. Was that down to contact? We didn't see, but suddenly we saw the car going rather slowly, and so Group M's honours are now fully in the hands of the driver, who was already leading the race. A bit of battling further down the order, 63 and 37, they have Lamborghini of Habaguchi and Anthony Liu in the Audi tucked in behind. There is Juan Sio in his seventh place Mercedes and the car that was sort of between them was Matchell he's picked up that puncture and reported to the pit lane so he's tumbled right down the order but 37 now started to make its move Anthony Liu trying hard but again he was uh, faster into the corner and was slower out so it is 1.8 seconds a gap between first and second then another two and a half seconds back to Li Yi in third place and then four seconds or so back to Liberati, so he's worked his way past Patel, so has Rob. So Patel, who was fourth, is now further back down the order, it's certainly changing behind, because uh, Anthony Liu pushing really hard. Has he made it stick as they kick through turn seven? Well, he did, but only as far as that corner. Now we have waved yellow flags, all the runners have backed right off, just trying to pick up what the incident is and where it is. It's towards the end of the lap. Safety, uh, full course yellow, there's the thing, I thought it was FC, it's FCY, full course yellow, the drivers all been told what to do, the race leader Patrick Niederhauser approaching turn 12, next car in line is the GT4, Reinhold Renger, Mercedes, and then Dennis Lind, who's second on the overall rankings, and uh, I gather it's for debris on the circuit, I wonder if that's to do with the 888 Mercedes coming with a flat tyre. Quite often you get the inside of the wheel arch gets shattered and that uh, can be fairly sharp, so you don't want someone else driving over that. That's probably a very clever call indeed. What it will do, as long as Reinhold Renger in the GT4 Mercedes tries to keep us, you know, doesn't let himself drop too far behind, but of course it should be all fairly equal because the drivers are running at a, a limited speed on full course yellow. If they exceed that speed, they will pick up big time penalties. Dennis Lind in the background, the left-hand side of the screen, run underway again, green flags away, nicely reacted to by the race leader, Patrick Niederhauser, need a bigger shot, a wider shot to see if Dennis Lind has uh, managed to get past the GT4 Mercedes 
in second place but uh, the advantage 4.3 seconds when they cross the start finish line and looking at that long shot as the field comes out of turn three i think it's about the same but if anything what's happened there is that uh, Yi in the Ferrari in third place with the bright yellow headlights is, uh, has, has made a better restart than Dennis Lind. And it's much closer. And uh, this is why we had the yellow flag. Fantastic replay there from a very bold marshal who will now be feeling rather warm. He ran out onto the circuit and picked up that bit of debris. I would suggest that was on the exit of turn six. He's now probably sitting behind the uh, safety barrier, panting, breathing very heavily. But well done, he's removed that sharp piece of dropped bodywork or whatever it was out on the circuit so back at full racing speed and suddenly it's now really effectively for many of these runners a sprint towards their pit stops of course many a driver could be fast on the track but just is found slightly napping on the approach road to the pit lane and then again on the exit of the pits when the new driver takes over the second you get over the, the limiter line where you can drop the limiter you accelerate out you've got to be hard on it and likewise you've got to break as late as possible to hit the white line before you have to drop down to the pit lane speed limit you can gain half a second here or there and gaining half a second out on the circuit isn't that easy so if the driver is right on top of his craft then a quick in and a quick out can really make a difference but what we're seeing is a clear lead now I, I, it just feels a lot larger but it's also because there's no, there's no gt4 traffic between the race leading 999 mercedes patrick niederhauser and then Dennis Lind. Dennis had the Lamborghini with the Ferrari right up its tailpipe, but now Eduardo Liberati, who works his way from sixth to fifth, fifth to fourth, is the one who's catching up. But I think what we're sensing now is that Lind has responded, didn't have the best of the restart, and I think that's why the Ferrari got right up onto his tail. And I think now he's starting to drop it all over again. The second of the Nissans, car number 18, that's their 12th position fighting with Stanley Stuvik, but unfortunately for the Thai fans, Stuvik has just, just dropped down a position, so Stuvik back to 12. In car number 9, 11. That's the sister, sister Porsche, going around with one of the two GT4 BMWs. That's 991, that's uh, Kieran Reid. That's Remy Gook, look out on the circuit, there are clusters of cars. That was, uh, sorry, Aiden Reid, I think, upon sharing with Darrell Young. That's the 991, which is the better place to do. So, gap first to second, three and a half seconds between the 999 Mercedes and the 19 Lamborghini. And just uh, 0.8 of a second back to the Ferrari. The Liberati tucked in behind about another second down in fourth place in his Nissan. Then Rump and Patel close together in the Audis. Juan Cio some distance further back, about another four seconds or so. 63 Lamborghini, always uh, down the tail end of the top end so far with Hamaguchi, he's in 8th and Anthony Liu tucked in behind in 9th place. Bring up the top 10 is Aiden Reed in the better place of the Craft Bamboo GT3 Porsches. Of course they've got one, a Porsche Cayman in GT4. Good to see the Alexander Matchell Mercedes, the silver one with the blue flash up the door, came in with that puncture. And is back out onto the circuit, but it's obviously tumbled right down the order. That I think we have to go to the final page of the timing graphics. I think in 26 out of the 29 runners will be where Alexander Matchell has got to in the number 888. Yes, there it is, two laps down. Well, effectively a lap and a bit down after that pit stop. And in fact, all on his own. Hiroshi Hamaguchi pressing on plenty of company Anthony Liu right in behind him there Anthony driving one of three of the absolute racing Audis there's our GT4 class leader is Reinhold Ranger in the Mercedes just in the background of the shot second place in, in class is Jakutsu so the BMW is a second and third Kenny Rata third in GT4 there's Jakutsu Away from that, that's a shot looking back towards the giant grandstands. That is looking back down the track as the cars uh, exit turn seven and go towards turn eight. A little bit of understeer in the mid corner there for Jakutsu as he tries not to lose too much ground to the driver of this car, the 666 Mercedes from Group M Racing. Reinhold Renger running solo this weekend in that one, so he's driver one and driver two, so he did two qualifying sessions this morning, as well as official practice, now he's doing the first and second parts of the race. The window should open when we have 35 
and no seconds, 35 minutes and no seconds on the clock at the top of the screen. So coming fairly soon, but right now it's heads down for the drivers. Haven't seen so much of the quick flash there of the number five Audi, but it's been the best race for Mark G. Lee, who's just joined the championship this weekend. Good history, and it won the Silver Cup class last year with Sean Fong, but uh, has uh, formed, formed the oldest Silver Cup pairing out there, both Mark G. Lee and his teammate Alex Young. 41 and a half, precisely. Years old, so it's the oldest Silver Cup pairing. There is the car. Number five. Mark just trying to find the balance. It does seem in a straight line this weekend, which is critical on that run from turn one up to turn three, and then from turn three back to turn four. The Audi just doesn't seem to have the ability to cut through the air. Certainly the Ferrari seems to do it rather better. And the Mercedes clearly with two wins in the opening two races at Sepang and leading this one. They've got something very right with their balance for this year. Marchi's next target is Andrew Kim, also now Audi, the number seven Audi, which she shares with it as a default. But the person happiest of all with the mix at the moment is Patrick Niederhauser, the Swiss racer. He's being chased very hard indeed by the 19 Lamborghini. That's the black one on the outside, not the red and silver one. Red and silver one is Andrew McPherson, 17th place in GT3. So fancied it might have just been going over a bump, a little bit of loose bodywork on the back of that. In retrospect, you can see there are quite a few bumps on the rise out of turn three up to turn four, so it probably wasn't loose, it was just the image you got as the car jiggled around a little bit. Leo Yi, though. Picking his way through, he's running third at the moment. Liberati right in behind that Nissan driver, pushing very hard indeed for KCMG. One of the two KCMG Nissans. They also have an Audi in the GT3 class as well, running in the AM category. And that's for Nioto Takeda and Takuya Shirasaka. But their pace cars are the Nissan GTRs, and uh, in fourth place, looking very promising and quite possibly hoping, well, definitely hoping, but quite possibly about to pass. Yi for third place, but Eduardo Liberati just by, biding his time, looking for the moment, doesn't want to stick his nose in where it could get damaged. Gap first to second, it's stabilised at about three and a half seconds, it's come down the odd tenth here or there, and then goes back the other way. So a little bit frustrating for the chasing, chasing grouping. That's the turn for Martin Rump to be slightly delayed by... Andrew McPherson, Lamborghini in a straight line, doesn't seem to have the answers for it either, either using the slipstream, not finding a way by until he takes the outside line up at turn three, wider in, it lets you carry a bit more speed through the corner, but you have to have enough grip to complete the turn, which he just about does, but bear in mind the drivers are getting warned, and some will be getting punished, exceeding track limits, in fact uh, car number three is one of the ones that uh, is starting to pick up warnings. You only get a certain number of warning. Two drivers are on final warnings. In fact, it's one, one driver twice. Unless they just press the same button twice. It's number five, so it's Marchi Lee. We were looking at his Audi not so long ago. And that's at turn eight for track limits. The race director has eyes all around the circuit. Now, a driver who could be very quick in the second part of the race is Tim Slade, who will be taking over the yellow Ferrari we just saw in our shot. Morris Chen driving it now. Tim Slade came so close to taking pole position for tomorrow's race, three laps within a tenth of a second, and then he was trumped at the, the, the final, final moments. But Morris Chen is down in 15th place. But once Tim Slade gets on board, I think you're going to say that, see that car making progress. So I would think that Chen will be coming in probably next time around because the pit window will open in 20 seconds. So next time around, uh, Morris Chen, if the team is on top of its game, Hub Auto Corsa team will call Chen in and give the longest tip possible for Tim Slade. So who's handing over to whom? Well, of course, our race leading car will be handed from Patrick Niederhauser to Marcus Pommer. That's a very good combination. And Dennis Lind will hand over the 19 Lamborghini to Martin Kodrick. Two very, very strong pairings. But for now, Dennis Lind he just gave another tip on the last lap and handed it back on the following one. 3.4 seconds in arrears. That is the gap. Three, that's what 3.4 seconds looks like. There is our race leader, Patrick Niederhauser. Marcus Pommer will, will be helmeted, booted, standing in the pit lane. Well, hopefully for him in the shade. And pit garage waiting to go. 
former German Formula 3 champion. The Group M clearly run a very, very well-balanced Mercedes. It just looks fantastic at all points on the circuit. There's the message pit window open at the top. So the first, those that had decided the starting driver was maybe the slightly weaker one in the pair will bring their driver in as soon as possible. But there's another nine minutes or so until pit window closes and to avoid having a red face. All drivers, all teams would need to get their driver in before that. You can still be in it after the pit window closes, but obviously it's about the pit entry being open for pit stop runners. All drivers have to do a driver change, or in the case of um, Reinhold Renger, doesn't have a teammate this weekend so he will stay on board the car but there's a, an amount of time you have to be at the standstill I just want to throw in the mix as well in the GT3 class the, the 888 car the one that's hit trouble that will have an extra 15 seconds at a standstill talk about insult to injury it's already coming for a puncture now we've got a whole gaggle of cars coming in Andrew McPherson is in the 45 KCMG Audi is in the pit lane as well uh, the number 28 Ferrari, that's an extra 10 seconds at a standstill, and the 63 Lamborghini, that's the one that Hiroshi Hamaguchi is at the wheel of. Only two mechanics are allowed to work on each car at a pit stop, no more, that's a way to, well, it keeps it easier for us to understand what's uh, happening to the cars, and also keeps costs down if you have a team of uh, 12 people changing wheels, tyres, everything on a car. Of course, that adds an enormous amount to the expense, travel, accommodation, etc., etc. So Patrick Niederhauser leading him, that was a better lap for him, he gained a quarter of a second to extend his lead to 3.6 seconds, and he's nearly 3.7. Aditya Patel had um, fallen down to sixth place behind Liberati and Rump, but still very much in the mix. Now, 28 car, this is the one that will have an extra 10 seconds at a standstill as Leo Yi hands over to his teammate Tim Slade but Tim as I said was on fantastic form sorry Morris Chen Leo years in the sister car so they don't need to rush too much so Ben Porter takes over the AMAC Lamborghini new set of Pirelli boots going on each of the cars this is the team I race win Mercedes, the one that started 29th and last. But our race leader, Patrick Niederhauser, 3.3 seconds clear last time around. So uh, just as he gained on Dennis Lynn's Lamborghini, the Lamborghini driver bit back again. I think it's just a case, case of where they find the lapped drivers. As, uh, drivers at this standard don't have lap times bob up and down by as much as uh, half a second a lap. They're too good for that. They should be lapping within a tenth or two tenths of a second. It's where they find the traffic. And that was the KCMG Audi that was demoted by Patrick Niederhauser. I reckon he will stay out until we see about 27 minutes on the clock. So he's got a longer stint in this race than his teammate Marcus Bommer. He has more experience in the cars. And of course, he and his uh, s well teammate Nico Bastian won the first of the two races at Sepang in the opening round of the Blanc Pan GT Series Asia. And no doubt have every desire for Niederhauser to gain another win here today. So the 63 Lamborghini, we saw that make its pit stop. That would have dropped it down the order, but we is now back out onto the circuit. So we're nearly halfway through the pit window, 10 minute opening time. Ferrari on the left of the screen, keeping very nicely out of, out of the way, but of course out of the running in so many ways. Going for a spin at turn one on the, uh, the opening corner on the opening lap, and, uh, really out of the running thereafter. Sandy Stuvik was handing over this Porsche uh, 911 to Australian racer Shea Davis. So, for the tie hero, he's had his run in this race, and uh, we will see him out again tomorrow. Did a good job there. Eduardo Liberati has done a very good job indeed, getting up to fourth place. The better place, the two KCMG Nissans. But despite being pushed very hard indeed by first Martin Rock on the opening lap, and then Dennis Lind as the Lamborghini driver came through, all the answers seem to be there for Patrick Niederhauser in the 999 Mercedes, leading the way. Ferrari in behind, of course, is a lap or so down after that early pit stop. So we've had a change of place. I want to see the shot in the background. Looks so uh, Leo Ye had got ahead of Dennis Lint's Lamborghini. Oh, no, Lamborghini came into the pit. So I think your pardon. I was looking for a symbol on the screen. There it is. Just when you look at a long shot and someone goes missing, you think, were they just out of shot? But Patrick Niederhauser now leading by 3.7 seconds over Lynn. It showed how... Not over Lynn. Lynn was in the pit. Uh, 4.9 seconds was the gap back to Ye. 
that almost looks like the opening lap again. We've had a cluster of cars coming out after their pit stops and uh, getting into the thick of the battle. So there is the 19 Lamborghini. Dennis Lind, first of the front runners to make a pit stop. That was from second place. He was about three and a half seconds down on the 999 Mercedes. That is still going out on the circuit. So as I predicted, Patrick Niederhauser will be going as long as he can. In fact, he's just come into the pit lane. It's trouble, can't quite see the cars leave turn 12. He looks to accelerate past the commentary position on the track, but uh, he's pitted and so has the number 27 Ferrari from third place. So how tidy and in and out was for Dennis Lind coming in and going back out onto the circuit, his uh, teammate Martin Codrick. We'll find out how good it is when we see the 999 Mercedes come out. Quite hard to see the 999 car because it's obscured by the GT4 runner from the same camp, the same group M Racing camp, 666, which is sitting in front of it in the pit lane. Of course, that's a foreshortening shot. There should be enough space for 999 if it needs to leave first to swing around the back of the GT4 Mercedes. But meanwhile, out on the circuit, turning through the twisters is 19. He needs to get down towards the end of the lap and be starting it because uh, not too long from now we'll have the silver and red Mercedes blasting back out onto the circuit with Marcus Pommer at the wheel. That will dictate whether the 999 car has uh, kept that three and a half seconds advantage or lost it in the course of the pit stop. No reason to suspect that uh, they would shed. That's actually in motoration terms quite a comfortable advantage. No need to rush things too much, but that's easy to say from up high in a commentary position. I'm not the one doing it, but they're 999 Mercedes just behind the pit wall, uh, pit wall windows, the protection. And they're past the green light and accelerating away, snaking away as Marcus Palmer puts the power down. Try not to put too much down because that's one of the most embarrassing things you can do. Accelerate it away from your pit stop and slide off the circuit. It's happened before, it will happen again tyres that aren't yet hot but here comes Marcus Pommer racing this year in the ADAC series in Germany also in a Mercedes that's why he's been drafted across the drive of Mercedes here with Patrick Niederhauser and there is the image out of turn three uh, before the pit stops it was the 999 Mercedes and then the 19 Lamborghini and it's the same the only difference is the Ferrari in the background has lost ground because that's just been handed over the number 27 car to Nick Foster and I'm afraid the ins and the outs cost the Ferrari crew don't forget they're about a second and a half down on third place but now it looks if anything as though the Lamborghini gained a second out of the race leader and uh, losing a second on the Lamborghini is the Ferrari that's why the battle is sort of instead of being the Mercedes and then the Lamborghini and Ferrari close together. It's the Mercedes and the Lamborghini relatively close together and the Ferrari dropping back somewhat. So all the front runners have made their pit stops. Pit window open for another minute or so. And I think only one car hasn't come in as yet, but that's probably about to be the case. Which is the number 17 car. Which is in GT4, now leading the GT4 class, but the 17 entry will have to make its pit stop and so the Taiwan top speed racing entry Keo Chang will hand over to Jeff Liu and that will drop him back down the order all over, order all over again but I think what we can safely say is the gap between first and second really did change in the course of those pit stops but it's still the 999 Mercedes that holds the realistic lead it's shown with Frankie Cheng as leading the race but of course, he uh, is only just exiting the pits, or more to the point. Martin Rump led the race, and uh, Frankie Cheng has taken it over. So everything is sh shaken, shaken down now. We're into the second half of the race, and uh, the background of the shot was the Nissan. But there we have 999. This now with Marcus Palmer being chased down by Martin Codrick. Martin has many years of Lamborghini experience in pretty much all forms of the Lamborghini Super Trofeo and in GT3 racing as well, and uh, he's starting to, to wind it up. Races one for Barwell Lamborghini team in the uh, Blancpain Endurance Series in Europe. So getting as much seat time as possible. Right now you can see Kodrick is really starting to close in on Pommer. Gap between them one and a half seconds before the pit stops, it was more like three and a half seconds. So it, did, it was indeed a, a good in by Lint and a good out from Pommer with the FFF racing team doing their bit in between to turn it around uh, without any particular trouble. Yes, definitely you can see Kodrick is almost in the slipstream now.
and the Ferrari losing ground a little bit. So it's Pommer, Kodrick, Foster, just looking at their respective, in fact, looking at their respective times, I, I'm doing a, an injustice because Nick Foster just said the Ferrari, 27 Ferrari's best lap of the race. It's a bit of, of a visual image there. He's three and a half seconds back from Kodrick, and, uh, well, he's not fighting anyone at the moment, but if he can carry on at that pace, he'll really start chipping away at their advantage. But before the pit stops, it was the 999 Mercedes. Marcus Palmer seems to be settling down now, but uh, Kodrick is getting closer and closer. And in the background, the shot out of turn three, you see Nick Foster using all the track, flashing his lights in that red and white Ferrari. Seeing what he can do about closing them down, but he is closing them down. A tenth here, a tenth there. So it's the 27 Ferrari in third place. And some great Audi battling down the order, but they're not really battling at the front end. That has been a feature here at the Chang International Circuit on the Blanc Pan GT Series. Asia's second race up here, just on the outskirts of Buriram. They haven't been the feature they were 12 months ago here. All traffic, car number 82 just sort of getting in the way there. That's Max Chen. He's taken it over from Kenny Rata. Both the first two got through, but another tenth of a second or so was lost there by race leader Marcus Palmer. Not his fault. The gap's coming down. He's going to have to hope the driver of another Mercedes, that albeit is a GT4 one from a different camp, but again he's lost out a little bit, the Mercedes had it from GT4 almost drove off the track, trying his best to keep out of the way, but the gap must be down to half a second, if not slightly less, 0.492, which is what I call slightly less than half a second, is the gap between first and second, and uh, well who was fastest in the top three, by half a second it was Nick Foster, so we've got Mercedes, Lamborghini, Ferrari, will that be the order at the end of the race, 22 and a half minutes remaining, and Nick Foster is doing all he can to make sure A, the Ferrari gets onto the tail of this lead duo to make it a trio, and B, that he really cuts them down and maybe fancies his chances of going past. And Foster and his teammate Leo Yi, Leo Yi Hong Li, to give him his full name, very effective in the opening rounds because they were fourth and fifth in the first two races in the opening rounds at Sepang. They're running third here. That's the sort of uh, run you're going to need in this uh, six-round, 12-race championship to, to make sure that you're going to feature it the very sharp end of the points table at the end of the season at the Ningbo International Circuit. In GT4, it's the driver of the 666 Mercedes, a Group M, leading the way in GT3 and GT4. Here he is in GT4, Reinhold Renger, driving on his own. It's quite an advantage, actually. Yes, of course, the drivers get a bit hot. Driving half an hour rather than a full hour will have to... You know, the driver's relatively fresh. But Reinhold has the advantage. Yes, he's slightly tired than if he took it over this car, but he knows exactly how the car was handling both before the pit stop and afterwards because he doesn't have to readjust or adjust to a car that might feel slightly strange, he can just simply get on it. So there he is leading GT4 in the background, second place car in class, the number 81 BMW from BMW Team Studio, that's uh, Takayuki Kinoshita. I must say those BMWs have looked um, very strong indeed here, the circuit seems to suit them. Oh no, a spinner from Reinhold Renger, so that probably does that mean that Kinoshita has gone into the lead? He was five seconds down in the GT4 class. Can I just rewind what I said? I'm saying, of course, a great advantage to Reinhold Renger. He knows how the car is handling, doesn't have to adjust to it, but unfortunately something has caught him out. Commentator's curse, you could call it. And he's gone for that rotation. Has that cost him the lead? It didn't take long to recover, but I think five seconds goes past in the blink of an eye. No, I think, just double-checking, which is the BMW behind? That's number 80. One, so he has just kept the lead, but by a great deal, that would have trimmed his advantage in the in the class. No, sorry, there is Reinhold Rang. Don't look at the wrong Mercedes. So yes, it took rather longer. Actually, is that going to drop him down behind the other BMWs? So we saw for sure that Kinoshita went past. No, it was a big enough advantage. Uh, the second BMW, which is third in class, was 20 or so seconds further back in the hands of Max Chen. So Reinhold Renger, well he's given himself a challenge, 20 minutes left to play, 20 minutes to get that 666 Mercedes back to the lead of the class. But look at the front of the race, point, just under 0.7 of a second, and three seconds flat back to Nick Foster. So it's tight. I have a feeling it's going to get a lot better. Now we have no idea why 666 went for a spin. Oh, bottom right, back right of the car, looks so like there's something hanging out underneath. Is that the floor tray that's broken and hanging down? Can't quite see, but it's something that looks Actually slightly metallic. Front end shot you can't see. Beautifully picked up by the camera crews and the race director, the TV director. 
let's have a little look underneath the back right hand corner something certainly flapping down i can't see from my commentary position because it's on the wrong side of the car for me now he may be getting a black and orange warning flag technical problems oh, with a bit of bodywork in the track on the start finish straight luckily it's not on the racing line but if you get two cars heading down towards turn one you don't want someone diving to the inside and catching that uh, debris on the circuit but we'll watch out if there are any warning flags for the 666 Mercedes so the Group M racing crew will be looking at the pictures on the screen very carefully indeed to work out what is hanging down from Reinhold Rengner's car he's running second in the GTM class he's uh, in fact 11 and a half seconds down on the uh, Kinoshita who went past when Rengner had that spin but we'll keep an eye out for that of course, it may not be affecting the way the car's handling, but uh, you don't want that getting loose, whatever's hanging down and coming off, because that could lead to problems. So there is the 666 car. So we can't quite see what it is, but we'll uh, keep looking. Alex Jung now at the wheel of the number five Audi, but it's uh, not a golden day for the team. Marchi Lee was running in 14th, and it's precisely where Alex Jung is running. He's not that far behind Josh Burden, though. And don't forget, Burden and his teammates uh, collected a second place last time out. He and Anthony Liu. So their form from Sepang seems to have deserted them somewhat. Hideshi Matsu. Oh, let's have another look. Oh, still can't quite work it out. Unfortunately, we can see something's hanging down, but it's right in the shadow. Great to be able to have another look at that. Still can't quite work out what is hanging off that, but uh, you can be sure the people up in race control will be taking a look. They'll be was getting their magnifying glass out to have a look what well, was definitely a, a bit of the under tray hanging off but they've got to make a decision because if that comes flying off the back of the car that could be very dangerous indeed for anybody else who is chasing it but they've got to be the ones that uh, make that decision not me quite clearly that would be disastrous leading the way though in the 999 mercedes for group m racing is marcus Pommer, and he's settled down three quarters of a second down the race, oh, just had the number, I think that's number five Audi into the pits. Alex Young was in 14th position. This isn't a scheduled pit stop, so uh, clearly all is not right. Drive through penalty, he's just come in, seems to be driving out the far end. In fact, we've got various drive through penalties number five, number 11. Oh, yes, I hadn't looked at that screen for a while. Number 81, these will be driver li uh, track limits warnings for the drivers. Those penalties will have been issued, so uh, some of them, number, car number 11, I'm afraid they're, they're going to need to see race officials quite soon because they've been given various warnings Tony Fong and Brian Lee now in their GT4 Porsche Cayman and there is Alex Young 14th place wasn't uh, exactly what he came up to Thailand from Malaysia for but uh, he'll be further down the order after that drive through penalty very tight on the track the GT4 Mercedes trying to keep out of the way at turn five and the whole gaggle of GT3 cars coming through and trying to go around the outside on the exit and therefore the inside into turn uh, six and seven was the Indigo Racing Mercedes number 97 He's got company because 97 has been pushed very hard indeed by Adelie Fong. Look out for that number seven Audi because he, it should be very handy. And 37 is in the mix as well, so it's a really as Josh Burden. So, what's happened? The tail end of the top 10 has become very tight fighting ground. 991 that's Darrell O. Young, he's in the thick of that grouping as well, sort of from 10th place down to about 14. Unfortunately, the 97 crew are off ruins dropping off a little bit down the order. Juwon Sio was running seventh, but uh, seems to be holding up the train of cars behind. There is a little bodywork. That's on the start finish straight. Only just enough space. One and a half car widths halfway down the pit wall. Now, we don't know which car that came off, but uh, still waiting to find out. Nine, eleven, of course. You can see there, ninth place overall. Shea Davis, Adelie Fong closing down, but I really get the feeling the number seven Audi is the quicker of that duo and may be able to overhaul them better place to the craft bamboo racing Porsches 28 I said look out for that Tim Slade he's in 14th position will be making his way forward if his form from qualifying and practice uh, continues through the race but he's only got quarter of an hour left to do it and that's all the time that Martin Kodrick has got to try and take the lead but last time around he was just under three tenths of a second down now he's in front he's moved into the lead of the race a timely snap back change of the lead and look at how the number 27 car the Ferrari of Nick Foster he was three and a bit seconds down and now we've got about 0.3 of a second covering the top three cars. So Martin Kodrick now le leading the race. Martin Kodrick in behind Marcus Pommer, flustered by having been passed by Kodrick in the Lamborghini. And now he's got Nick Foster, who was chipping away at them, taking half a second here, half a second there. And the Ferrari is a car that clearly, 12 months ago, looked fantastic here 
at the Chang International Circuit and its characteristics continue to be absolutely suitable for the circuit just outside Buriram. I wondered if, if Foster was going to be able to catch the, the lead duo and make it a trio, but I didn't think he was going to do it that fast. He's got plenty of time. I had the feeling he might have crept up there with the final couple of laps to get in there and see what he can do. He's got plenty of time to try and pick his moment. It's not going to be easy because Marcus Pommer is nobody's fool. In fact, Pommer, as the, that trio goes into turn five, <coughs> excuse me, turn six, very, very close indeed. He was starting to try and fight back, but I think that move by Kodrick uh, was a telling one. Was it traffic assisted or did he get by on his merits? I sort of fancy he may start to escape, but the Mercedes looks so much better balanced here at the Chang International Circuit that. Uh, Ooh, as I say that, a little bit of understeer at turn 10. So maybe the tyres are starting to go away for Pommer. Certainly not, look as saying they're going away for Nick Foster. Down to turn 12 out of the 12. 4.554 kilometres this circuit and gap between first and second. It was covered by 0.7 of a second last time around. May have come down by a tenth. Let's have a little look. Oh no, it's gone out to one second. So what we're seeing in fact is uh, Kodrick just starting to escape. But uh, Nick Foster, having got close, is going to be able to observe where the strengths and weaknesses are of the Mercedes as he gives chase. Marcus Bobber won't be trying to give away any weaknesses, but uh, sometimes it's easier to be the hunter than the hunted. But of course the hunted, Pommer in the 999 Mercedes, is also trying to do everything he can to keep Kodrick very close indeed and maybe try and spring his way back up. Frankie Cheng is running in fourth place, the 911, 911, 911 if you will. Now in ninth place, Shea Davis, Davis being pushed very hard indeed. Adderley Fong right onto his tail. In fact, it's now Josh Burden because uh, Fong has just gone in front. There we are, the number seven Audi just in front. So 911 down to 10th place. So even at this point in the race, we are having changes of order. Natalie Fong in the grey Audi with the yellow flashes. I sense he had the speed. He was in about 15th place or thereabouts. And uh, not only has he caught the cars in front, he's passed them and is now dropping them. But in free practice, he was showing he was almost the quickest of the lot. So the Hong Kong driver, well, he's a long way behind uh, the Nissan and Matsuda. I don't expect in the remaining 12 minutes he can haul back 18 seconds. And he's moved at least to ninth place overall. There we are, the number seven Audi in ninth place. And 911 down to 10th and uh, trying to gain at least a point, which run down to 10th place, Josh Burden in the 37 Audi. There we have them. Here are our lead trio. Kodrich going past the 77 Craft Bamboo Racing GT4 entry. Jean-Marc Merlin handed that over to... Sorry, Frank Yu handed that over to Jean-Marc Merlin. Merlin, French racer in his 50s, keeps out of his way, so doesn't obstruct Pommer or Foster. But what we start to see is Kodrich is just starting to eke his way clear. For all it takes, a gaggle of slower cars from the GT4 class, getting slightly in his way, and he'll be compromised. But uh, sometimes being the first car in the chain, train of... Front runners is the best place to be, in fact, just coming up. Uh, number 80, yes it is, the number 80 Cayman, racing Spirit Thailand, one of three Thai GT4 crews, all in Porsche Caymans, manages to see the chasing pack, and that's Prada, Tantem, Sapia, and keep out of the way. I must say, so far, I think the GT4 runners have done an exemplary job you get very good lines of sight. Ooh, what I didn't want was, was the sound. And uh, let's go down to the pits because we've got the first driver's socks who made their pit stops now in the garages. And Renai has caught up with local hero Sandy Stubik. Okay, Sandy, look, you're the homeboy here. This is going to be a track that you're used to, good at. Um, what are conditions like out there? Well, it's very hot today, as you can see. I'm totally soaked in sweat. Uh, it was a tough stint. Because of the hot weather, we can feel the tires degradating quite a lot. So, suffered with a bit of oversteer. That made the car quite difficult to drive, but Shea's doing a great job now, keeping us in 10th place. A lot of traffic, yeah? Yeah, a lot of traffic, especially when we start lapping GT4s. All the GT3s are still in one place, so there's a lot of action on track. Well, good to hear. Well done, Renai, for catching uh, Sandy and dragging him out into the sunshine midway through the race. There was pit traffic during that interview because quite a few runners are coming through the pits for drive-through penalties or even stop-and-go penalties, including the 82 BMW that was uh, third in GTM. That will drop it down the order, unfortunately, for Max Chen. 
So looking at the 9-11, 9-11. That's Shea Davis in 10th place, having taken over from Sandy Stubik. In fact, Davis now in 11th because he's been passed by the 37 Audi. There is the 37 Audi. The 45 car, the KCMG entry, just across the nose of Shea Davis there, but he is a lap down. Not quite running at the full, full pace, but the two absolute racing Audi, 7 and then 37, made their way past the 911. So the Kraft Bamboo racing cars just don't seem to have the legs of their rivals here in Thailand. Thai sponsors there, Singer in the door, the Singer Beer Company. Two Nissans running together. We saw 23 well up the order early on, got up to fourth place in the hands of Eduardo Liberati, but for Florian Strauss it's proving a little bit harder. He's got Hideki Matsuda, sorry, Sugio Matsuda all over his tail and into the pits. Lamborghini time. And that unfortunately was our race leader, Martin Kodrick. I just have to double check it wasn't 63. This would be stop and go penalty. It really was stop and go penalty and uh, the timing screen is just full of the names of team managers who have to go up to race control including from FFF Racing for the 19 Lamborghini. That's the car that's made it stop and go penalty. He's going to be far from a low but that's taken our race leader and dropped him down right down the order. So suddenly the advantage swings back towards the 999 Mercedes. Not either of those two in shot but that one there coming into the background. Nick Foster in the Ferrari for Hub Auto Corsa was right on its tail. It looks like Pommer's got the measure of him. Earlier in the second part of the race, we saw the Ferrari driver taking half a second per lap at both Kodrick and Marcus Pommer in the 999 Mercedes. Now I think it. Oh, well, there's. Now, driver's been given warnings for track limits, and that was a massive run around the outside. All four wheels off the circuit going out of. Turn number seven for our race leader Marcus Pommer. We've just had problems that led to the 19 Lamborghini being hauled in to make a drive through penalty or a stop and go for about one second. That's dropped it right down the order. Might well be now one coming towards Marcus Pommer. So suddenly the 27 Ferrari could be sitting very pretty. That's not sitting pretty. That's a tyre carcass. Can't see exactly where that is on the circuit, but that may well need to be recovered. That actually could work to the advantage of Marcus Pommer. If, if we have to have a full course yellow, we had one earlier in the race as Debris had to be cleared. And the guide as to how far down the order the 19 Lamborghini fell. He's running around behind the 63 Lamborghini, and that was in fifth place in the hands of Mapelli. So down theoretically six. Oh, the 82 BMW, that just had a drive-through penalty. I don't think that was connected, but he seems to have four tyres, doesn't seem to have left any tyre carcass, so a bit more of a mystery for that one. So Marco Mapelli took over the 63 Lamborghini, that fell down the order somewhat because that had to have a five, five seconds extra during its pit stop. Having finished third in the second race at Sepang. Gosh, now we're down, down to just six and a bit minutes remaining, leading the way. Marcus Pommer in the 999 Mercedes, 0.6, well, call it 0.7 of a second over Nick Foster in the 27 Ferrari. And then number three, moving its way forward, Martin Rumper, and at the wheel now, Frankie Cheng Kung Fu. He's a long way back, 18 and a half seconds down, and then the better place to the Lamborghinis now. Is the bodywork damage in the front right-hand corner? Front left-hand driver, driver corner. Oh, it's the front right-hand corner, yes, missing, well, the rubbery bit that goes on the wheel. So very unfortunate indeed for number 81, and that was uh, Takui... Takayuki Kinoshita has been running second in the GT4 class. So suddenly we've got uh, Jean-Marc Merlin leading the class. Oh, well, fantastic bit of uh, camera work there. Doesn't make great viewing for Kinoshita, but uh, that is the result of obviously delamination and uh, going for the tyres. So he did well to limp back, but there may well be bodywork damage within that wheel arch as well as the edges of it coming in with no tyre on the front right hand corner at 81 BMW. So just over five minutes remaining in the race. For 81, the race isn't run, but any chance of picking up a great points haul that looked to be its absolute right appears to have gone by the by. Still waiting. Still a message on the screen about who needs to go and see. Have a drive-through penalty. The latest car to come for a drive-through penalty should be the number 72 Mercedes from Team iRace.win. Jill Vanille. The 888 Mercedes, slightly confusing because it's uh, a lap down after Alexander Matchell came into the pits that extra time. And now you can see the bodywork still hanging off the back of the underside of the 666 Mercedes. 
Reinhold Renger leading the race in that class. Over Jean Marc Merlant, so it's just dropping 43 seconds clear, in fact. So there is the leader in GT4. Well, no messages uh, coming our way yet. Anything to do with the bodywork hanging off the back of the 666 car, Mercedes that leads GT4, so maybe it's deep that, that it hasn't deteriorated. Up front, 1.1 seconds between our race leading Mercedes and the chasing Nick Foster in the Ferrari. Did Foster go too hard too soon to take the life out of his tyres in the chase? Of what was the Lamborghini in the Mercedes became just the Mercedes, the 999 Mercedes leading the race, but uh, for Martin Kodrick down in fifth position after that drive through penalty, worked his way to the lead of the race and then fell back down the order with that drive through penalty. He wasn't alone, but he was alone among the front runners to have to make that extra stop. So, three and a half minutes remaining, it's for Marcus Pommer to put traffic, put the GT4 cars between himself and the chase of Nick Foster. He's done precisely that, two of them giving him a nice little buffer. It was 1.1 seconds of start finish line. You can see the AMAC Lamborghini left the screen. That's had an extra pit stop, so Ben Porter now at the wheel, but uh, keeping nicely out of the way as they come down to turn four. And for Marcus Pommer, he'll be putting a smile on the face of Patrick Niederhauser because there's still other cars between them. In fact, one of them is the second Group M racing Mercedes. That is a lap down, though, and I'm sure not trying to get in the way, but uh, Maxi Book doing his bit, and now Nick Foster, well, as he can't get past that uh, 888 Mercedes, I have to say his race opportunity has, has been hampered, I cannot see, we will see this challenge for the top step of the podium, it's looking so it's going to be a grand stand finish, and, uh, again, just out of shot, a little bit of uh, debris sitting out on the circuit, but for Nick Foster, very frustrating indeed, because Maxi Book terms of natural pace the pace of this 888 Mercedes it's a lap down but it's it's a car that should be right at the front end so she, he should have no trouble at all lapping at his full race pace despite what Nick Foster does by flicking his headlights and he shouldn't even get in the way because he, he seems to be the match of the Ferrari but it's up to the race officials to decide if they're going to put a wave blue flag but it looks so like Boots doing enough just stay where he needs to two minutes left on the clock and for Marcus Palmer he's got a cushion with his teammate, albeit a lapped teammate, between himself and that racer there, Nick Foster, the Hub Auto Racing Corsa, Hub Auto Corsa Ferrari. Down through turn three, the broad hairpin at the far end of the circuit, and then come back and the undulating straight back over the hill. So Frankie Cheng holding down third place, but he's 18 seconds further back in the number three alley. Marco Vapelli is now fourth and Martin Kodrick. So the Lamborghini is fifth, uh, sorry, fourth and fifth, and then Matsuda in the 18, and Nissan is sixth. Seven and 37, bringing up the tail end of the top ten. Ninth and tenth for Adelie Fong and Josh Burton, just sort of going into turn one. There is a race order. Frankie Cheng just going out of shot. Marco Mapelli is next up, but he's another three, nearly four seconds further back. So the tight battle at the front has now moved out to just under two seconds. There's the 999 Mercedes, but importantly for him, the 888 Mercedes is lapped, but it's between him on the circuit and the chasing Nick Foster. And I have to say, as we're deep into, as we're into the final minute now, you feel that Marcus Pommer has got this one in the bag. Down to turn 12 inside one of the GT4 Porsche Caymans. Riding shotgun behind him, Maxi Book. This has got to be a Mercedes race. Great run from Nick Foster giving chase, building on the work in the early part of the race from Leo Yi. But uh, alas, and alas for Martin Kodrick, you have to feel for him, he had the drive through penalty, but uh, Ward for exceeding track limits, not alone in that, but then got the drive through penalty, running in fifth, and unlikely to be able to catch, uh, well, he, catch he can catch Marco Mapelli, but will Mapelli, his teammate, move out of the way? No reason he has to, but they're just, under, just around half a second apart. But uh, waiting for the flag. It's now we've reached the end of one hour of racing. We have to complete the lap. And Nick Foster has no answers in the 27 Ferrari. It's going to be a victory for the 999 Mercedes unless anything peculiar happens in this late stage. Through turn five, which feeds immediately into six around the, the largest of the four lakes. And uh, all looking very much under control. Maxi Boot riding shotgun, but he's 17th place overall. He's uh, had the problems early on. Matchell coming in for that uh, unappointed stop. 
unplanned, unscheduled, but uh, nothing, no problems at all for the 999 Mercedes. You can afford to take the wide line around out of turn 9 to turn 10 because uh, this is the final lap. He's just got the final sequence of corners. He's gone through turn 11, 12 corners on a lap. So it's uh, a photo finish, albeit with the 888 Mercedes uh, not in the points reckoning. And so the 999 Mercedes takes the chequered flag in a flamboyant swerve and the 27 Ferrari comes through in second place. It's all been very well controlled and there's really quite a, a gap back to Frankie Cheng who will finish third for the absolute racing Audi team. So they would have gathered a, a useful selection of points with their drivers. The Lamborghinis will come home fourth and fifth. GT4 car leading the class. Reinhold Renger does it, appear to have made it to, to the finish of the race. There he is, 666. That bodywork, uh, well, it, it's got to the points. It hasn't got any worse at all, as far as I can see. So they obviously are judged that they've been looking at that. Oh, maybe it's starting to fall apart a little bit, but I actually think that's a little bit of masking tape. So uh, seems not too bad at all. So for Reinhold Renger, the only driver to do the entirety of this one-hour race on his own, had that spin. Don't know what caused the spin, it could have been the bodywork hanging down, but you sort of feel it was because of the spin. Rejoined, went to second place in class, but the car that was challenging him for GT4 honours uh, ended up uh, having to have a drive-through penalty, and uh, that meant the Group M Racing win the GT3 class and the GT4 class. So victory to Patrick Niederhauser to build on one he scored at Sepang and Marcus Palmer came on board this weekend has made an instant impact he weathered the battle a charge from Nick Foster being overtaken by the Lamborghini of Martin Kodrick but comes away with the maximum points haul so a nice tidy victory there for the Group M racing team in the top class and the junior class they've uh, controlled it very well indeed but it really was quite a race we had other challenges and but for the odd instant here or there we could have had a very very different race finish which is bodes well for tomorrow's racing so 666 Reinhold Rang will be uh, delighted not to have the noise of that bit of bodywork dragging behind him and the team will say job well done Silver class honours, the top three finishes are all in the silver class. Pro Am honours, it was Matt's, it was Mapelli who came through to take the Pro Am honours, and the Am honours went to number 45, the KCMG Audi of Shirasaka in 16th place overall. What a great race! So a little calm falls over the circuit as after one hour of racing, the first of two races here this weekend the Chang International Circuit and uh, the cars have finished first and third down there ready for the celebrations Patrick Niederhauser he's having a great year and it's just getting better and better there's Patrick the balls of his feet come on come out of here and give me a hug so Marcus Pommer helmeted and no doubt hot and uh, Patrick Niederhauser has managed to co cool down as he's had half an hour out of the car but I tell you what we never hang around we've got straight down to hear from the winners and uh, will Patrick Niederhauser probably about to bite the top off the microphone, waiting for Marcus Pommer to take his helmet and balaclava off his earpieces out, and I'm sure the two drivers will be delighted because they had to work hard for that victory for, for Group M Racing. But uh, very shortly we'll have Renai down there to hear and give us the thoughts of our, our race-winning duo, Patrick Niederhauser, with Renai. What was that like to watch? <laughs> terrible, <laughs> terrible. No. Uh, it's, yeah, it's much worse than uh, driving driving by its own. Uh, I mean, you know, on the outside, you just can hope. And uh, I mean, I, I trusted Marcus that he's going to to, to finish the job. But it's so you never know it until the checkered flag. And uh, but yeah, I was I was much more nervous uh, than my own start. But uh, yeah, now it's a big relief, and I'm super happy. P1, Marcus, you brought that car over the line. You ready to talk to us? Tell us how you did that. Yeah, it was actually quite tough because our pit stop was not perfect because one car was in front of us. So I had to steer a lot and lost like two seconds maybe. So I had to push like hell and then was every lap traffic with the GT4. And then one guy, I nearly crashed with him. So I lost the position to the Lambo, but I already knew that he has a drive through. So I relaxed. 
And yes, at the end, I just focused on driving on the track, no mistake, and bring it home. That's okay. it. <laughs> and eventful for you guys, but happy? Sorry? Eventful, but happy now. Yeah, of course. We are really happy. It's our first victory together. We are the first time here together. And so that's a good job also from the team, Group M. So amazing. Congratulations. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. That was Renai with Patrick Niederhauser and Marcus Pommer. Overall winners here. Top three crews all in the Silver Cup class. But Group M racing, plenty happening in front of them and around them. And in fact, it was good to hear from Marcus Pommer. We saw the, the shots of the pit stop and we could see, in fact, it was the sister car in the GT4 class, the 666 of Reinhold Renger, that was sort of sitting out on pit apron. And uh, that was the car that uh, Marcus mentioned, if not by name and number, that caused a bit of a swerve away from the pit stop. And then tripping over a back marker, that's how Martin Kodrich obviously got past them to take the lead in the 19 Lamborghini. And uh, then, unfortunately for Kodrick, had to come into the pits for a drive through penalty. And instead of leading the race, ended up down in fifth position overall. Plenty of events happening out on the circuit. But one of, the, one of the drives of the race was the number three car. Martin Rump started it and uh, got right up at the front end, up to second place, but then got in the wars. Audis didn't seem to have the legs, but then Frankie Cheng got on board and brought it back up to third place. They're down on the track with Renai. Congratulations on the podium today. Thanks. Thanks, Renai. It's a really good, a really good effort. I'm happy that uh, we we were quite consistent on the track and uh, and really good job to Absolute for for providing us uh, such a consistent kind of setup. And yeah, I think that's it. So happy, Frankie, you brought it in. Yeah, I mean, the Martin did a really good qualify, and uh, I mean, although that uh, I wouldn't say that we have the fastest car, but we have the quite consistent, reliable car. I think that's uh, pretty much the key of the championship. And uh, so he's really happy to get the first podium, and he's my. We partnering together the first time, uh, first year. I think it's nice to have the podium as early as possible. It's a great way to go home. Next race. Sorry, I'll finish that one. Back to you. So good to hear from Frankie Cheng, Kong Fu, and Martin Rump. Very understated, but they they know they didn't have the legs of the winning, the pace of the winning car. But consistency, they brought it up, and it really is key in this championship. You need a well-matched pair, and you need a car that uh, behaves as well at the end of the race as it does when it kicks off one hour earlier. So great mix of cars at the top. We have a Mercedes topping the chart, but only just 1.4 seconds from the Ferrari of uh, Nick Foster, who brought it home, and Leo Yi. Cheng and Rump, we just heard from them, third overall. Not far ahead of the better of the two Lamborghinis, Mapelli and Hamaguchi, but the Kodrich Lin car in fifth was the one that did take the lead of the race and then had that drive-through penalty. Matsuda and Taniguchi sixth in their Nissan, Nissan, and then Gilbert and Patel started with great hopes, but ended up down in seventh place. And the second of the Nissan, Strauss and Liberati, eighth. Top ten completed by Adeli Fong, Andrew Kim in their Audi, Josh Burden, and Anthony Liu in 10th place in their Audi. And then the best of the, the, the Porsches, Sandy Stuvik, local hero, and Shea Davis in 11th place. Top car in GT4 was Reinhold Renger in 666 in 20th place. I uh, just want to pick out the AM winners. Number 45 won that class in 16th place overall, Shirasaka and Takeda. And in fact, we got everybody through to the finish. 29 starters. We lost the McLaren before the start of the race for technical issues, but all 29 starters finished. Some of the drivers will have learned some valuable lessons today about A, staying within the white lights and uh, not getting drive through penalties. But let's find out what it takes to win GT4 with bits hanging off your car. Renai is down with Reinhold Renger. Reinhold, now you had, a, you had stuff hanging off your car at one point. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, it was a hard race. A lot of things going on. But finally, we was lucky and we won, yeah. And a double effort from you. Yeah, so double stint. So uh, we got for this, of course, a penalty. So uh, plus seven seconds again. But uh, finally, I could manage it. It was very hard. It's super warm inside the car and uh, the competitors are very strong. So I have to push from the beginning to the end. Made a mistake also. And uh, so in the end, I'm super happy that I, that I could bring it back. Is it a disadvantage or an advantage to you to be driving on your own? It's a good question. So I guess from the from power wise, it's better you drive, uh, you share the car, definitely because then you are fresh, you can push harder. Um, so I guess all the drivers are super good, and so they know after a couple of laps the the track. So it's not an advantage, I would say. Maybe more a little disadvantage, but it's okay. So I I felt good and. Yeah. Looks like you managed it just fine. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Big pleasure. Good to hear from Reinhold Renger down there just in front of the podium with Renai. We're going to have many podium ceremonies for you.
because of course we have the overall run and let's have a look at the highlights and it seems more than an hour ago but uh, in fact conditions are nicer now at the end but it was hot humid slightly breezy which is a good thing down on the grid in the countdown to the start and the Ferrari on the right hand side with Leo Yi really waited second on the grid as you can see running down to turn one back in fourth place and uh, pushing very hard indeed was number three Martin Rump at the start but it's a 999 Mercedes in the lead of the race there it tended to stay with Patrick Niederhauser at the wheel challenged through the course of the race by the Lamborghini pushing very hard in the early stages number 19 Dennis Lint doing the pushing in GT4 it was a uh, BMW ahead of Mercedes but not always in that order and then a big problem for Alexander Matchell he just taken over the 888 Mercedes well, he driving the 888 Mercedes before hiding over to Maxi Boot but unfortunately that slow smoky puncture brought out a full course yellow because of debris in the track probably off the Mercedes beautifully uh, look at that sprint and retrieve maneuver Moving now to the 888, out of the, not out of the running, but out of the reckoning after that long pit stop. And around the outside of a sister Lamborghini from AMAC Motorsport, Wentz, the 19 car. That's the long way around. That cost him a bit of time. Dennis Lind, GT4, it was the 666. Reinhold Renger, Mercedes, that moved ahead of the better, to, better placed of the BMWs and took the lead in the class. But nobody seemed to have the answer to Patrick Niederhauser really running in very good order at the front of the race. Then came the time of the pit stops, that was the KCMG Audi. And the 19 Lamborghini was the first of the front runners to blink. Dennis Lint brought it in and Martin Kodrick went out and uh, closed the disadvantage, closed the gap for three and a half seconds, about one and a half seconds on the Mercedes. And the Mercedes had been slightly hampered in the course of its pit stop. In fact, by its sister car, this one here, the 666 Mercedes of Reinhold Ranger. And so when we had Marcus Palmer taking over from Patrick Niederhauser. He lost those couple of seconds. That's what really allowed the Lamborghini to close right in. There, unfortunately, was the change of order because that was the spin for Reinhold Renger. And he went round, looked down the bottom right hand corner of the back of the car, under tray hanging down. That was the damage from going over the curbs on the spin. He'd had lost the lead in the class. But then the GT4 BMW that took the lead had to have a drive through penalty. So he took the lead back all over again. And then this was the lead battle. Martin Kodrick in the Lamborghini, he managed to jump. Thomas Mercedes when they came across a GT4 back marker. There's one getting it rather wrong. That's the Cayman from a uh, Unix racing team. And that's why the Lamborghini got in front. Then Nick Foster, three and a half seconds down, got right onto the tail and really started challenging it there at the latest possible moment with a drive-through penalty to be served. Lamborghini number 19 out of the lead of the race, into the pit lane, huge frustration, leaving the battle to the 999 and the 27 Ferrari. It, instead of being Lamborghini, Mercedes, Ferrari, it was Mercedes, Ferrari, and here was the 18, oh dear me, there's the, that is why we saw the BMW limping in with bodywork damage, carcass come off its tyre, but as much as the Australian racer Nick Foster could push, he then found the sister 888, uh, Group 8, Group M, Mercedes, between himself and the race leader, Maxi Buk laps down after the Alexander Matchell puncture and uh, running as fast as the race leader and just providing that comfortable cushion that allowed Marcus Pommer to have that flamboyant finish. Nick Foster had to settle for second place, the number three Audi, Frankie Chen coming home third. And GT4 victory did, after the drive through penalty for the Mercedes, uh, for the BMW, go to the Mercedes of Reinhold Renger. Patrick Niederhauser, though, very happy indeed. Marcus Pommer, also very happy, but uh, still cooking inside his helmet. So now back to the live pictures and just waiting for the podium ceremonies to commence. A little calm after the storm, if you will. Your overall winners in third place. Warm welcome to Frankie Cheng, Hong Fu and Martin Rump. So just welcoming up the in driver's place, third place overall. Leo Yi, Hong Li, and Nick Foster. Yeah. Third place group. Rump and Cheng, Nick Foster, and Leo Yi coming out. And your winners in and car number nine, nine, race nine Marcus Palmer and Patrick Niederhauser. So here we have which one's going to be first out on the podium. Patrick Niederhauser, who's really starting to gather a few wins this year. That's his third, is by my reckoning. And for Marcus Palmer, that's really the getting his uh, campaign off to a flying Akeem start. Link, brand manager of Blancpain. The brand manager of Blancpain presenting the trophies. There's Leo Yi. Yi. And Nick Foster, who's 
puffing a bit there, having uh, had that chase towards the finish, trying to get his Ferrari onto the top step of the podium, but still they'll be pleased with second place. And presenting the checks, Stefan Rattel, chairman and SRO. And in the Blancpain GT Series around the world, you get a trophy, you get some champagne, but you also get checks. So here's the CEO and founder of the SRO organization. That is Stefan Rattel handing out the checks. The checks 5, are being presented US dollars by in second place Rattel, and 10,000 US dollars. SRO. Looks better the other way up, guys. Everyone together for a group photo. So Marcus Pommer is running out of hands. It's always the problem. You know that when the champagne starts to be sprayed, you need to have two hands free for that job. So he's already planning ahead. But uh, big smiles from Marcus Pommer and Patrick Niederhauser up on the top step of the podium. And champagne. And it's time for champagne. Nick Foster, very wise, appears to have left the podium entirely to get out of the way. Maybe he hasn't got any spare overalls for tomorrow. Of course, we've got to do the same thing all over again, but albeit with driver number two starting in each of those driving combinations for tomorrow's races. So rather lonely on the top of the podium for Niederhauser and Pommer but uh, they will have broadest smiles. More podium ceremonies to follow because, of course, we've got the Pro-Am honours, we've got the Am honours, we've got GT4 honours, and then a special podium for the GT4 Porsche finishers. So plenty of the podium is being redressed. It doesn't mean that a lot of the drivers will go home smelling of champagne, but uh, that's what a lot of them like to have. Just thinking back to that race, the Group M racing crew didn't have it all their own way. We have to remember that uh, the 888 car ended up uh, out of the action, still running at the finish, but that puncture cost them dearly. But the pace that we saw from Maxi Buch at the end showed that he too could be a real feature come tomorrow's race, and he'll be kicking it off. So these drivers just popping out. That's Hamaguchi up onto the top step. This is for Pro-Am honours. And that 63 Lamborghini crew. Hiroshi Hamaguchi and Marco Mapelli through to the top at the end. Second place crew on the left of the podium. 18 was Yuki Taniguchi and Sugiya Matsuda racing one of the two KCMG Nissans. And on the right hand of the screen, the third place crew. Number seven crew of Andrew Kim and Adali Fong. Certainly Adelie going very well in the second part of the race. There's Adelie on the right of your screen. And again, Akim Linka, the brand manager for Blancpain, handing out uh, the trophies and the winner's watch. The clock to put on the uh, team wall, I would suggest, in the workshops. Looks like Hiroshi Hamaguchi quite fancies taking that home with him, actually. So the FFF Racing Team Lamborghini crew on the top step taking the Pro-Am honours here in the first of two races at Champagne. Chang International Circuit. So that was the Pram honours. We had the overall honours, the top three silver crews, or top silver crews filled the top three places. Pommer and Niederhauser taking the overall honours. The Pram honours there, Marco Mapelli and Hiroshi Hamaguchi for the FFF Racing Lamborghini crew. And next should be the turn of the AM class GT3 runners. Two runners in this class and a victory the went the to KCMG in with their Audi place. runners. We'll see them in, in a second. Number 51, Andrew McPherson. And William ben Porter. But second place, Ben Porter and the team owner and boss, Andrew McPherson, the red and silver Lamborghini. They come out to the left-hand step of the podium. Number 45, Naoto Takeda and Takuya Shirasaka. But it was the KCMG Audi crew, number 45, that took the overall honours. Naoto Takeda and Takuya Shirasaka. These are presented by Akim Linker, brand manager of Blancpain. And again, Akim Linker coming out to present the trophies from Blancpain. And for a lot of the drivers in, in the AM class, of course, this is their chance to come out and play on some top international circuits. And for many of them, it's their first visit here to 
the Chang International Circuit. It's certainly one they'll talk about. It's uh, somewhere very unexpected in upcountry Thailand, but it really is a fantastic facility. And certainly it's all the sweeter if you can take a winner's trophy. So for Takeda and Shirasaka, that's a job well done, and they'll be trying to do the same again tomorrow. That's in Sunday's race. Andrew McPherson and Ben Porter, they'll, they'll be pleased with their afternoon's racing as well. And uh, certainly, uh, it's funny, when you, when you move down towards the Am drivers, they, they really spray the uh, champagne with a lot more vigour, because it means victory means just so much more. This is for fun, not for great professional success. And we still have the GT4 podiums to go. And of course, in that, we'll have just the one driver on the top podium step because Reinhold Ranger raced the whole event on his own. So he'll be the driver who deserves the biggest chance to lie down after an hour of racing in uh, great temperatures, soaring heat here in Thailand. This is the podium for the GT4 class. In third place, a warm welcome for car number 22, Shavanin Bunitkit Sada and Pitsanu Sirimonkol Kasem. So now we're welcoming the GT4 runners. Third place, it's the JWD Unix racing team, Chavanin Bunitkit Sada and Pitsanu Sirimonkol Kasem. That wasn't easy for me to say. In second place in car number 77. Second place, car number 77, Frank Craft Bamboo Racing, Merlin. that's easier. Frank Yu and Jean-Marc Merlin. Very successful last year. They won the GT4 title. Back for more with Craft Bamboo Racing. So there's Andrew Frank Willen on the left and Jean-Marc on the right. The victory Renger. today in GT4 went to the 666 Mercedes of Reinhold Renger and Reinhold Renger. He did both parts of the race, so up onto the top step. He had his woes, he had his spin, he had that bodywork dragging off the back of the car. But he still came good to win by uh, a small margin there. The trophies are presented by Akim Linker, brand manager of Blanc Pan. And what a lovely touch. He might have been just one driver, but he gets both bottles of champagne. I guess he needs it after all the dehydration. So, again, Akim Linker, brand manager for Blanc Pan, steps out to present the trophies. Must be hot, hot work in a suit here in Thailand. But uh, standards are standards. So, gr delighted to see that. Uh, so smart. So, there. One trophy, he probably wants two, he did and both parts of the race, but he's got the two bottles of champagne, Stephane so Reinhold Ranger, he'll have a big smile on his face, not just for the trophy, he's going to get a check any moment now, so out comes the check from the founder and CEO of the S SRO, which is Stefan Rattel, $3,500 for Reinhold Ranger there, victory. All together for a photo. We've heard... Before the race from Stefan Rattel suggesting if the numbers of GT4 runners continues to climb, and it very much is the story in international racing at the moment, they may well have their own race uh, when we get round to the third champagne. version next year of the Blancpain GT Series Asia. Certainly it is a growth area, and we've got 19 GT3 class cars here as well, and uh, every sign will have more of those, so that could be a very sensible thing indeed. There's the famous uh, champagne music, the winning music, and Reinhold Renger, Touching his bottles with Frank Q, and on the left of the screen, Jean-Marc Merlin. They were overall champions in GT4 last year. Look at the smile on Jean-Marc's face, enjoying his action here in Asia for the second year running. And there is time for one more podium, a special podium again for the GT4 class, but this one is for those competing with Porsches. So we won't see Reinhold Renger coming back, but we should see onto the top step of the podium, by my reckoning, the drivers who finished second overall. Frank Yu and Jean-Marc Merlin for Kraft this Bamboo is a Racing. For the Porsche GT4. In third place, car number 14, your home and boys. And third place Tosaka crew Pomyai from Morsang Racing Yota. Team. Chayapan Yota and Tosafol Famyai. They came home in 28th position overall, but third in the Porsche, Porsche class. In second place, Sontaya Kunblom and Prida Tantampsaya. And then Racing Spirit Thailand, another home team. Sontaya Kunblom and Prida Tantampsaya. They took second place. And your winners in, in the number 80 22, Porsche. The home and the top Chavon, Porsche Cayman. Ah, it's a special one for the home crews. 
So up onto the top step goes the 22 crew from JWD Unix Racing Team, Chavanin Bundit Katsada and Pitsanu Sirim Konkasem. Trophies are presented by Alex Gibo from Porsche. So there we go, five podiums from one race. So met a great number of the runners who went out today, have reason to smile. They go home with a trophy, smile on their face, but they've got to do it all over again tomorrow, which uh, isn't a hardship, I can assure you. It's for these drivers. Great to have these three there, home teams. Smart the level of the presentation cameras. of the cars, they look absolutely magnificent. I think the Thai teams in particular made a fabulous effort putting their cars in metallic colours that absolutely stood out, whether it was sunny or not. If I had to give a prize, it would go to the Morsang Enjoy Racing Team, number champagne. 22. They were the ones on the top step, and their car in bright gold and bright blue metallic looked absolutely superb. So Porsche Caymans getting a special podium of their own for the three local teams, and... Uh, <laughs> champagne going off when it wasn't really meant to up there on the top step but for the Morsang Racing Team for JWD Unix Racing Team and Racing Spirit Thailand it's been it's been great having them on board and we look forward to how they'll they will fare tomorrow so the cars being pushed away from the grid we've had plenty to talk about in the first of the two races here for Blanc Pan GT Series Race Asia 2018, it was victory to Mercedes, ahead of Ferrari, ahead of Audi, and then Lamborghini in fourth place. That is a good, rec a good reckoner by anybody's uh, thoughts. Four different makes of car, plenty of activity around the circuit, some spectacular shots of the racing, some teams having mishaps, the odd puncture here or there, the odd spin here or there, drive-through penalties for some, not for others, and that is the key. Be consistent, keep it clean, don't trip up in your pit stop, and that is exactly how it worked for the Group M racing team. And that is why victors today in race one were Marcus Palmer and Patrick Niederhauser.